My name is David Klein. I'm 26 years old. I'm the son of Mike and Brenda Klein. Uh, I've been in Ketchikan for four weeks now. I moved here from New Hampshire. Uh, my parents moved here about a year ago, actually exactly one year ago today, uh, when my dad became the electric division manager for KPU. I was born in Fresno, California. And I was raised in a Christian home. When I was in fourth grade, I was baptized in the swimming pool of, uh, <clears throat> of our pastor's home when I accepted Jesus into my heart as my savior. I was pretty serious about my faith as a youth and was active in the mu <clears throat> music ministry as well as the lead singer of a Christian hard rock band in high school. It wasn't until I graduated from high school and went 40 miles away to school for my freshman year of college that my life began to change. I fell into the typical college trap, the party scene. Spending time in off-campus friends' apartments where underage drinking, marijuana, and cocaine were commonly accepted and practiced. I became close friends with the campus pot dealer and the campus coke dealer. Though I did not take part in all activities, it still influenced who I was. On some weekends, I would spend time with my parents as the well-behaved son they knew me as. I was the epitome of Dr. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. For obvious reasons, I was not successful at that college and decided to no longer attend there. A few months later, I attended a trade school for a long-time hobby of mine. I've always been interested in electronics and cars, so I enrolled at Rytoff School, <coughs> School of Mobile Electronics in Massachusetts. I graduated with my MECP certification in 2005, and after being hired instantly and working full-time, I finally felt fulfilled in life during the day. Outside of work, my life hadn't changed. I still had an empty feeling and just couldn't put my finger on it. Moving forward, a year later, my father was displaced from his job in his field. My folks then decided to purchase a Quiznos sub-restaurant franchise. My parents asked me if they, if they asked me if I would be the restaurant's general manager. We operated the business for three years, but it was becoming a financial burden to my parents. While I was bringing in a paycheck, my parents were not. I was living more than comfortably, and I had to have the nicest material possessions I could find. From nice TVs to nice cars, I was more concerned about what I had than who I was. My, my focus was far from Christ. It wasn't until I found myself in a financial burden or in financial bondage and getting into a relationship that was not a healthy one that I came to terms with things. Sometimes God becomes apparent in a not so comfortable way. I was forced to give away my beautiful modified decked out sports car, sell my nice TVs, furniture, and any other possessions to pay off most of my debts. I had hit rock bottom. I began to realize that I had been more focused on material possessions <clears throat> and Christ had humbled me. My heart finally started to take a turn in the right direction. Shortly before moving to Ketchikan, I made a move to Texas to follow what I thought was an opportunity for love and a job in the automotive industry. I had a one-way ticket and when I got off the plane I was informed that the business where, I'd, where I would be working would be closing that week. Things already felt wrong. However, I decided to put my best foot forward and make the most of it. The most of it lasted two weeks. Love losing my place. Uh, yeah, most of it lasted two, the best of it lasted two weeks. When having a midday conversation with my parents, my dad, when my dad stated, don't wait until the last minute to pull the pin. <laughs> I already had. Things had majorly deteriorated in Texas and I needed to get out. I knew deep in my heart that God had better plans for me. Within hours, I was on a bus from Abilene, Texas and on my way to Seattle. Two and a half days on a bus, I was uncertain what God had planned for me, especially in a remote town on an island in southeast Alaska. <laughs> when I arrived at the airport in Seattle, I had nothing better to do with my time, so I figured, why not send an email to the only car stereo shop that I knew of in Ketchikan that my mom shared with me previously? 
Within an hour of sending the email, Nelson Hayes, the owner of Bob Wires Audio here in town, had responded and offered me part-time work. This was definitely proof to me that it was a God thing. I hadn't even landed in Ketchikan yet. At that moment, I knew that I was doing the right thing and God had important plans for me here. Plans that were no longer in my control. Today I am being baptized as a recommitment of my faith. God's, God has presented himself to me by showing me that he is real. I lost sight of things in the past few years and today, I'm washing that away. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's pray for David. Um, Lord, you are moving David where you want him to be. And sometimes that is uh, hard and difficult and painful. But Lord, I pray that you meet uh, David in those painful moments and that uh, he, uh, or th that you give him all that he's looking for, all that satisfaction uh, that money can't bring, that things can't bring. Lord, I pray that you uh, fill him up to the, to, to com the complete place, Lord, where um, he knows that you're real and he knows that you're there. Lord, I pray that uh, as uh, David turns back to you, Lord, that you give him a very uh, clear road to walk. And I pray that uh, he becomes a mighty force in the kingdom. Lord, I pray that he uses every skill, every ability that he has learned um, with his jobs in the school, and he utilizes those uh, for you. So Lord, I pray that you uh, take him where you want, and um, I, just, I just see some, I agree, I see some great things coming out of David because of you and because of his uh, turning back to you. So we pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks.